okay um thank you dr sibil um even though we have the same ppt but we feel more in control so <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks yeah i hope it's visible so i go ahead from here thank you very much uh, so uh, we uh dr sibil has already spoken about the uh, you know four aspects of the curriculum and how it is it could be looked at so uh, we are uh, this particular graph that we are seeing is kind of a visual representation of what she just now spoke about the four points they are kind of put in the graphical manner on the x axis you can see how it uh, you know uh, kind of grows from only merely transferring the content so my university or my college has told me that this is the uh, content in the curriculum content in the syllabus and uh, whether i'm doing justice to that that's all is the level of thinking over here from there to knowledge and from there to the critical reflection um, the level at which uh, the uh, the teaching aid uh, starts asking that whether it should be there why is it there uh, if this not uh, if if not this content then what else should be there what uh, skills are required under this what implications of uh, this uh, particular chunk of content uh, will be there for the students in the uh, you know for the career path and in life overall so uh, on the x axis you can see that uh, from content transfer where it is merely you know kind of a technical role that is being played from there it goes to a much much higher level when it uh, you know when the teacher moves to the critical reflection level when you look at the uh, y axis it is uh, the journey begins with the social control so naturally you know i'm i'm answerable to my head of the department my principal my vice chancellor so from there it gradually becomes ownership so it is like you know it is my responsibility i should be doing it and from there it goes on the y axis the topmost um, point is the emancipation so where it is more of okay i'm doing i'm no i'm i'm enjoying so it is more of one's uh, uh one's involvement one's felt responsibility rather than you know because somebody else is controlling me somebody else is going to write my uh, cr maybe by the end of the year so not because of that but because i feel it is it is needed and then the you know the central part uh, which which goes diagonally, diagonally uh, from syllabus to curricular uh, empowerment so if you if you go on you know go on that path you can see that Uh, uh right from syllabus to the combination of critical reflection on x axis and emancipation on y axis one can reach till the level of the curricular's empowerment and it is not only empowering the students but also the teachers themselves as well so uh, that that's what you know this particular graph speaks about now uh, when we are talking about the various competencies we like you know as mentioned on the earlier uh, slide graph as well as when dr sibil spoke it is not only about the content that is to be there but the what kind of learning teaching learning strategies would i involve if i want them to develop say a critical thinking even within my students am i giving them the learning opportunities uh, in my class where they uh, deliberate with each other where they opine uh, you know their views uh, where they argue and counter argue and uh, am i giving them that uh, kind of uh, a free ethos whether i am giving uh, them a kind of a non judgmental type of the uh, you know learning environment um and made be offline online in both the environments in fact so am i giving that so that that is uh, you know to that uh, detail or that micro level uh, the uh, the thinking of curriculum would uh, go into uh, similarly uh, whether it's a student or learner centered approach or is it whether you know my uh, uh, my beliefs or uh, 
my biases as a teacher because even i'm i'm as a teacher i'm a human being so i may have certain biases certain likes dislikes so uh, am i uh, pushing them to the uh, to my learners to my students or am i putting it more uh, you know to uh, as as mentioned student centered so it is completely geared towards their needs and what they would want what they are comfortable with and then uh, you know further moving on to achieving the standards for competences because it is it's not about uh, you know they learning a particular content uh, and getting certain uh, respectable respectable percentage in the exams but it is about uh, they developing these competencies which not only take them to further higher or uh, to be a better student a better learner but even for the beyond their education to be a uh, a better human being a better citizen so whether that is happening so that that, that is something which we'll we we'll have to look into and that is why you can see that the focus would be also on the objectives so you can have the same content but what kind of objectives are we looking into or are we uh, setting for that particular content also on matters and not only teaching but here one more word comes that is assessment so even in the assessment am i asking them the questions where they would have the scope to give their own opinion and not on i mean to my opinion it doesn't even end over there it or oh, it further gets percolated to when i actually assess their answers so for example uh, suppose i uh, there is a you know question given that okay right uh, um, uh, you know your uh, views about uh, say lockdown so naturally the learners will have their variety of views towards this particular uh, action taken by the government i as a person may have my own views but am i keeping my own views aside while i am giving marks to uh, but there whatever you know the uh, answers written am i when i'm writing the comments for their answers am i keeping my own views aside or uh, so in, even to that level uh, it would be uh, you know having the relevance and that is why the uh, not only teaching learning but even at assessment level it is of very very crucial now uh, generally we say that it is uh, like you know in the beginning dr sibyl asked that who is his main responsibility when we talk about um, you know curriculum setting a curriculum so uh, here, here on this slide you are we are seeing it right from you know it's from uh, if you look at it from grassroots level this entire uh, you know system of education uh, Uh, and curriculum of course is a part of it but entire we all the entire system ugc universities autonomous or affiliated colleges even teachers all of this is you know uh, it's for those you know uh, the students uh, in focus and that is why it is absolutely uh, you know when we uh, we have to talk about uh, them also at the, you know which are who are at the grassroots level Oh, sorry. Then the next one is the at the teaching level. So of course, uh, uh, when we talk about the curriculum, uh, we begin with the university, or if it is autonomous college, uh, it is at the college level. So uh, that is maybe at the maybe considered as the apex body for for that particular student. uh and from there it will be uh, you know uh, percolating further to the teaching uh, uh, level or to the teachers and then further to the grassroots level so in order to actually check of uh, you know uh, the um, good curriculum or the successful implementation of the curriculum one will have to not only look at the you know the document as dr sibyl mentioned that you know as a product that okay this i prepared a very comprehensive curriculum so looking at only that one document which is at the apex level may not be sufficient but one will have to look at uh, how the teachers are actually 
transcribing them, them uh, that curriculum in the classroom and uh, exactly what are the uh, you know changes that you can see in the students so that that is very uh, crucial when we are looking at it as a process uh this is one term which i just love that is a negotiated artifact so as we know that uh, maybe uh, nep as the policy document or uh, even the curriculum which is uh, design taking care of what is expected by nac and by uh, uh, nep uh, that, that is something you know that that that's a beginning point but the you know the beauty of the pro, uh, further process is in the negotiation and that is why i love this word uh, negotiated artifact so be because is how that curriculum uh, uh, you know uh, is planned to be transcribed in the in the classroom if there is a piece of content in the um, you know in that curriculum how, what what are how am i how have i planned for uh you know actually teaching in the classroom have i planned uh, a lecture a merely a lecture or uh, uh, you know when i actually work through the nuances of how it is will be you know in the classroom that time it will be uh, the more and more fun and uh, the actual utility of whatever efforts have been put in for uh designing and developing that curriculum will be actually put to use and that is why uh it is about the you know the knowledge to be looked at the process and that is why it's no more than knowledge it's a process so knowing again it is the uh, autonomy uh that is uh, with the teacher even if it is a not only a um, autonomous college even if it is an affiliated college or even if it is a you know department university department then it the autonomy that is with the uh, that lies with the teacher so uh, one needs to be uh, kind of um, oriented or kind of uh, you know uh, literate or aware that okay this is my autonomy as a teacher in the classroom and of course with autonomy there comes a responsibility as well so uh, the teacher comes uh, into picture over here here and then the students uh, widening participation so uh, there was a mention some time ago about taking feedback from the students so of course it is with back from the students but it is not only uh, you know after everything is over or the course is over but even during uh, the course uh, you know the how the course various course activities are planned even during that that what are their opinions how do they feel that this should be you know handled in in, in which particular manner to this extent that uh, i'll give you an example uh, we have um, uh, ma msc e learning um, uh, program in our department so we make them write uh, a lot of uh, you know session plans and uh, there are a lot of uh, formats or templates uh, that are required so uh, is it as a teacher i am giving or dictating the template to them which is have which will have a minimal of their participation because they will be kind of like how i am following just the syllabus they will be following my the template given by the teacher as against that if the process begins like okay the, what is expected for example they have to prepare a template for writing a session plan for workshop so uh, okay then what is workshop what is expected in workshop uh, uh, what are the you know essential features of it what information would you need so this kind of discussion if it goes and then we ask that okay now we have to write a session plans because you know planning helps always so uh, what do you think should be the uh, the format what should be uh maybe for example the columns in that uh, you know that planning why the se sequence of those columns should be in a particular manner how it uh, you know aff uh, affects etc so if you involve the students into all this process uh then actually i i personally feel that it is that point where the you know the 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 vision behind the curriculum is actually is reaching to the uh, learners from that point onwards 
Now, uh, I have a question. I have spoken quite a lot. So, a question for all the participants. You may uh, please type in the chat or you can unmute yourself and respond. That um, uh, there are, uh, you know, four contexts that are uh, like uh, being mentioned, which uh, Dr. Sibyl also spoke about. So, uh, which amongst these, in your opinion, are uh, within the reach of a, as a teacher, when you are in the you know, curricular transactions. Uh, like, and if you feel that there are more than one, then which one dominantly or predominantly you feel that um, it, it is within your control or uh, within your zone of acting or action, doing something. Okay, I'm opening chat here so that I'm able to see the responses. You can also unmute and respond. If you have any challenges with audio, you can use chat option. Okay, yeah. Somebody has written its process, okay. Uh, I think even the product, finally, okay. how you want to what what you want out of that curri uh, curriculum or how <coughs> to make the best use of that curriculum in the classroom situation to get okay okay as a oh. autonomous college i think we enjoy all because everything is within our transaction but if i had to choose one it would be process okay okay good so uh, uh, why, when ma'am said the product, I would like to just say, um, uh, like, you know, it is how we are looking at those terms. Uh, the uh, way in which uh, Dr. Sibyl explained the meaning, she was talking that, okay, this is the product of, you know, maybe suppose the board of studies and the board of studies came up with this, uh, you know, document of curriculum. That's how uh, the product was defined uh, when she explained. And while when now Madhuri ma'am uh, responded just now, uh, uh, I think for her, she was looking at, uh, uh, you know, the students, students. and how the changes Absolutely. In, uh, uh, those students. Yeah, so yes. that, that's interesting. Okay, thank you very much. So we move ahead. Yeah. So here, uh, of course, uh, there are some questions. We uh, we will not uh, keep on discussing the questions in the chat, but I would definitely like to raise these questions in the light of uh, you know the discussion that we have had till now. That uh, do we have a view on uh, curriculum as a teacher? Do we uh, push ourselves to that point that okay, this is my opinion on it this is something should be there or should not be there or maybe the sequence, everything. So do we ask that question to ourselves? That, that's the question being asked right now. Uh, uh, similarly, um, if, if it is yes, if you feel that yes, it, I have a view, then which view and how does it reflect in our teaching, learning and evaluation? So uh, maybe this question is a little... Um, what do you say, uh, a kind of, the, the kind of a question where a uh, uh, longer answer would be uh, required, not you can't write in yes, no, or one word. So uh, that is why these are kind of the reflective questions that are uh, designed for you while you're listening to this particular session. And as I said, it is not only into teaching, learning, but also during evaluation. Am I taking it to that level uh, as well? And the third question is the uh, what is the common thread that links all all of these four? So these are some of the reflective questions. Of course, we will move ahead, but yeah, we we would like you all to think on these uh, lines. Now, uh, when we have already talk, talked about you know in uh, curriculum, but it is here we are talking about how it is a you know part of a. Uh, uh, process of empowering and now this empowering or process of empowerment is both for the students and the, uh, the teachers uh, it is there is a mention about the various stakeholders 
uh, on this slide. And when we talk about the stakeholders, uh, the, this mention did not come earlier, but uh, to my opinion, even the parents and uh, the maybe uh, say, for example, industry, the place where the, uh, the students are going to further work uh, later on, they are also the stakeholders. Uh, now, again, giving example from my department, our department the students, they work a lot with the e-learning industries. So uh, we do have the inputs from them. Um, uh, as you know that in SNDT, uh, having the internship at master's level has been mandatory. So these students, when they spend uh, six to eight weeks minimum in the industry, during fourth semester. After that, during internship, Viva, we get an opportunity to have one-to-one -one dialogue uh, with their mentors in the industry. So they give quite a lot of inputs, which uh, we we utilize in our uh, you know when we change make the changes in the uh, curriculum and syllabus. Similarly, um, for board of studies, the structure is such that we have the representatives from the industry. We have the representatives uh, who are our, uh, you know, ex students, the toppers of the uh, earlier batch. So uh, they definitely do contribute uh, into the, you know, curriculum designing. And we this once again, um, the Dr. Sibyl and myself, we really fell in love with this particular diagram, which uh, she had also shown in her her part of presentation. That uh, only after you know having such a rigorous thinking and action on the you know curriculum, only then all the three components of that entire circle of uh, curriculum. Uh, will be enjoyed by the um, you know by the teacher and uh, the the results will actually reach the students from that particular aspect so you can see that they are all of us so it's not only the uh, you know the people who are on the board of studies but also the students and the teachers all of us are very much a part of this constructing the you know curriculum uh, that process may not be at a you know specified uh, level uh, all all of them may not get the opportunity to be on board of studies yes but when it comes to enacted and experience uh, you know those sections or those uh, aspects definitely uh, all of them have the uh, you know uh, pay, you know say and um, they can definitely contribute now we are we are this we are coming to the you know um, you know tell piece of this uh, uh, session uh, since we have we were to talk about the curriculum development in the light of NAC and NEP these are the four uh, different uh, emphasis that we could uh, think about uh, in the context of curriculum development so first is the curriculum uh, uh, planning which is uh, definitely either the, you know, for affiliated or conducted colleges department, for all of them, it is um, their bodies are there and they definitely take care of uh, this particular part. So this, they, uh, what the document, they come up with, it's kind of a prescribed curriculum. But after uh, that prescribed curriculum, when it is actually given to two different teachers from two different uh, institutes, for example, they would make a different meaning of it and uh, they would have different plan for uh, actually implementation in the classroom. And that would lead to the enacted uh, curriculum, which we have already uh, you know, kind of got literate to this particular concept. The uh, college also would, uh, you know, kind of look into how uh, they would like to place it across their, you know, entire year and uh, whatever resources they may be having uh, in the in their college institute. So that kind of becomes the curricular framework. And then uh, the uh, the last uh, part of it is. Uh, when there there are uh, the possibilities of when they uh, there are different choices that could be given to the students uh, in uh, while actually transacting the curriculum 
that would uh, add to much more freedom as well as much more uh, uh, capacity building and enhancement of their uh, abilities uh, in the students when we are talking about the academic flexibility so many uh, you know on different uh, uh, domains the flexibility and freedom is uh, possible it could be that how much time one would like to uh, spend on a particular aspect as dr sibyl uh, she gave an example that the curriculum may be you know it it meant something different in earlier batch and the present batch it would mean something different mean in the sense the kind of deliberations discussions um that they would have would uh, differ and depending on that again maybe the time frame required for that particular course would go on uh, differing it would also uh, have the implications on the uh, horizontal uh, mobility and especially the interdisciplinary options that come up now nep talks a lot about uh, multidisciplinary interdisciplinary transdisciplinary so uh, in that uh, context as well this brings in a lot of academic uh, flexibility there could be other options also which uh, would be coming into picture for curricular transactions so uh, it may be like you know what kind of learning resources to be used what kind of uh modality i would like to use uh, what kind of uh, field work uh, to be given for this batch of students and so on and so forth so like that you know right from the uh, micro level decisions uh, one would get that kind of academic flexibility which even uh, uh, you know nep talks about and which very much goes in the light of even the you know the theoretical base of entire curriculum uh, development so he, you can see here that there are various key indicators for of this flexibility where you can see that there are there could be a supp supplementary uh, enrichment programs uh, designed for the students and a, a credit the uh, system also like for example we have the choice based credit system which also would be uh, in a way uh, giving this kind of academic flexibility at sntt uh, we have this flexibility uh, campus wise when it comes to uh, choice based credit system so all those uh, departments on that particular campus we have three campuses so all departments from that particular campus they come together uh, they each one bring, brings in one course which could be taken up by uh, the students of other departments and that gives lot of flexibility uh, to the learners to learn something uh, from other department from little uh, different domain uh, than uh, the one in which they are getting their master's degree the uh, next one is the curriculum enrichment so the curriculum document is prepared but how it is getting enriched through the uh, various uh, you know values now here in this case even the millennium developmental goals mdg also come into a uh, picture because we want the learner to be not only you know completing the program with good uh, marks or good performance but also become a good human being uh, and good citizen later on and that is why you can see that even you know environment sustainability even uh, values all of them you know, definitely become a part of it so how uh, that particular content of the curriculum is linked with all of them as and when one gets opportunity number 1 and also create the opportunities for you know such linkages deliberately so maybe uh, as a teacher we need to be kind of vigilant towards uh, you know uh, having these opportunities to be deliberately brought in into the, uh, the scenario and discussions so you can see that uh you know even gender or human values developing uh, creative and divergent competencies all of them definitely come into picture here the next is the feedback system and as i said that feedback not only from the uh, uh students but also from uh, parents 
general society uh, even the you know the world of work all of them could put, uh, put in the uh, efforts and uh, you know give the feedback and that 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 uh, uh, that contribution will help in making the curriculum a uh, better and better uh, document as well as you know for the for the uh, batches it could be more and more helpful so uh, with all this uh, discussion and uh, deliberations on this particular topic we would uh, say that uh, let us commit ourselves for those individuals those teachers who are having the ability to critically evaluate the curriculum and just not take it as verbatim or as a, you know kind of um, uh, you know some document where i have no Uh, say in that not not that manner but please uh, critically let us evaluate and see that what best could be achieved for our students and secondly carefully construct or modify to the needs of general population and individual students as well that we serve that whether it is uh, taking care of all the type of uh, learners and students that also we need to look into so i think that's all and thank you once again to all of you uh, thanks to uh, sibil and the uh, college for giving me this opportunity and uh, i would like to wish all of you on occasion of sankranti makar sankranti and i my favorite sentence is tegu gya and spashta bola so thank you very much thank you.